into the hands of John C. Hopkins. Can we see the words way, man? Amen. Can you guys just wave your hand just a little bit with us before we start ministering to you? Let's minister just a little bit to the Lord. No. trying to pray, but I have some times where I'm I'm on church out, sometimes hurting the views. I can't fake it all anymore, but take me to
So they should receive those Bibles in six to ten business days. So you guys are part of the church. So all the blessings that we have given out will come back to you hundredfold return. Amen. It's always a blessing to give back. And so we give it to the elders of the churches, I believe. And so got giant print Bibles for them. <laughs> and they look real nice. Amen. And so they're going to teach the congregation. They have a large church. <laughs> that's, that, that cracks me up. So that's a blessing. We thank you guys for partnering with us. Amen. Your prayers, your money, your gifts. Everybody Amen. did whatever they did. It's always a blessing. Amen. Chris helped us out. Chris is the uh, person who connected everybody on the internet. So it's, a, it's the five-fold ministry. It's a blessing. Amen. Praise, Amen. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Another thing to do to get us, uh, a wonderful thing to let me know is the churches in Africa and Asia are praying for their life. Isn't that Amen. wonderful? Amen. So God has brothers and sisters all over the world. Praise the Lord. Praying for us as we're praying for them. The and we just want to welcome those of you who are tuning in from South America, Amen. from Japan, from Germany, the Philippines, and Europe. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. And most importantly, I want to thank my fiance for tuning in. Amen. God bless you, girl. I'm looking at you. <laughs> no, but seriously, I just want to thank God so much for everything he's done for us as a church Amen. family. Amen. Um, I'm sure you guys have guessed that every time when you go to reach the lost or even reach our brothers and sisters sometimes God calls you when you see a need the Bible says you meet the need and you don't embarrass people that's one amen. thing I like about our church when we help people we don't mention them by name because people need their dignity amen because when we need help we don't want people flashing amen. our faces and even on the website right. you know it's something you gotta do things in secret amen, amen. and we're to praise God for wonderful members like you guys amen. because when you're going to sleep you're winning souls isn't that praise wonderful Lord, you have no idea how many souls God is helping us reach. Amen. And for the first time, I believe, last year, the number one way how people tune into our program is by cell phone. Isn't that amazing? People Amen. are tuning in to watch Word of Life Ministries on a cell phone. Praise Amen. So we, we thank God for that, and we praise God that uh, you will reap a hundredfold return, not only in finances, but in your own lives. How many of the greatest gift God can ever give back to you is to win your own household? Amen. Amen. It's nice to have money. It's nice to have a car. But what does it have all that if everyone you love goes ahead? Amen. Amen. Just keeping it real. So we want to praise God for that. Uh, we're going to still talk about our series, but we're going to take a little twist. We're going to talk about Take Me to the King. Still talking about intercessory prayer. Take Me to the King. Everybody said, Take Me, take take me, me to, the king. to the King. And um, basically, we're still studying about the power of, of intercessory prayer. And we talked about the heart of the intercessor the last time. We're going to talk to you more specifically how you get taken to the king. Because in times past, how many know even now, if you're not part of the royal lineage or have any access to the royal blood, you have no right to see the king. Amen. If you go to real countries that have real kings, God bless President Obama, God bless our Republican and Democratic parties, but that's nothing like what some other countries go through. You have to have an appointment to see the king. And the kind of king that we serve today, his door is always open. Because the Bible God. says, come boldly before the throne Amen. of grace. See, only people who are sons and daughters have access. And that's Amen. why I thank Jesus so much, because he came to be the middleman. Amen. Did you realize that the ministry of the intercessor that Jesus had didn't start after he died and went back to heaven? He's always been praying for you. Amen. Did you know that? We don't have time to go through that, but the Bible says before the foundations of the earth, he was slain. Amen. Which meant he was interceding for you before you were created. Before Adam and Eve were even created, he interceded for you and it was settled. That's how come when they sinned in the Garden of Eden, the book of Genesis, the third chapter, God already had a strategy. Give God a praise that he is still praying for you. Amen. 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 I woke up this morning. I was like three or four something in the morning. Y'all, anyone knows John Christopher Hopkins knows I am not a morning person. I got up early this morning and just fully excited and in the spirit of praise all over the place. And I was like, oh, my goodness. God's about to do something wonderful for his people. And the things he kept telling me through songs, because he's ministered to me in songs. Anytime you, you feel the power of God in songs, pay attention to the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Because it's the lyrics that happens to have his word. If you listen to them carefully, they tell you what he's about to do. And the things I was listening to was telling me that you're going to make it. You're going to overcome. You're going through trials and situations, but there's a light. You're going to make it. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed back in bread. Anytime when you help out people get the word of God, expect the devil to attack you. Amen. Expect him to attack, you know, in your finances. Expect him to attempt to attack your body. But the good news is when he attacks, it's letting you know it's a test. 
And I believe the word the Lord told me was, which I wrote down was, we have entered into a season of testing. Mm -hmm. But not many days hence, you will overcome. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. You will overcome. Because when you go to a season of testing, what you don't realize is, if God gives you a test, he's letting you know you've already passed. Amen. He doesn't give you something more than you can bear. That's right. He will give you something greater than you've imagined. Mm -hmm. See, this is something Christians, even, I, even till this day, I resist. I resist tests, trials, and temptations. I'm one of those children and the children of God that if there's a test, trial, or temptation, I want him to tell me what the way of escape is now yeah. so I can avoid the test, trial, all together. That's not how God operates. Because no, when he takes you a test, you never know. This could be the test where he sends Boaz to your rescue. Amen. This could be the test he sends Ruth well, in your pathway. Well, this could be the test that opens up the door to see your children get saved. Well, this crazy. could be the test that calls you to have that patience that you've been well, asking God for. Crazy. To give you the endurance, because you're about to run a marathon. The Bible says, those that wait upon the Lord, yes. he shall renew their strength. Yes. You're going through strength training. Praise if you do your research on strength training, they start you out with those easy exercises. Uh -huh. You think you can do it. And all of a sudden, they start to go one more mile. The whole is with you. You got to go one more mile. Chris. Oh, I can't do it. Yes, you can. I can't do it. Yes, you can. No, I can't. You fall and get back up. He keeps, he keeps pushing. Yes, he does. Every, all the days of your life, you're going to go through seasons of testing, trials, yes. and situations. Amen. The good news is if you test, test this test, you won't go across that same test. Amen. He will promote you to another test. Praise the Lord. He gives you seasons. Because the book of Luke, the fourth chapter, talks about the devil left Jesus for a season. A season could be three months. Mm -hmm. A season could be a year. Uh -huh. A season could be two years, three years. I'm going for the 10-year mark. Because the more you less complain, the longer the seasons go. Amen. Write that down. When you are expecting God to grow you, when you get to the point in life where you are no longer complaining, God can trust you with longer seasons of peace. Amen. There came a day in Job's life where the devil never came against him again because he endured trials, temptations, and tests. Amen. There is a place in God where God will anoint you so powerful that when he takes you certain tests, there will come a season in your life that to the world looks like you will never be tested again. That's my goal. Amen? Amen. Let's turn to the book of Psalms, the 100th chapter, the fourth verse. Talking about the power of the intercessor. Take you to the king. Amen? Amen. That's my song. Tamla, man. Sister Cora can sing, can't yes, she? Can. I did that song, No Justice. Yes, she Which, if she comes over here and sing, I'm going to say, girl, I'm, I'm back at the piano. Well, crazy. <laughs> That's like the Clark says, you better not sing with Karen Clark Sheer. <laughs> you better tell her I'll be a background singer. <laughs> oh, <my goodness>. Amen. <laughs> Shoot. Psalms, the hundred chapter, the fourth verse. We're going to talk a little bit more specific. How do you get taken to the king? God is just like any other earthly king in this sense. You can't come before a king without a gift. Amen. Like the song says in scripture, sometimes all you have is yourself. Amen. Who can, what can you give somebody who owns the world? Who owns the universe? What can you give somebody? You give you a little measly thousand dollars, a million dollars. He owns it. Amen. He owns it. The, the best thing you can ever give is what we're about to read. So whenever you're interceding for others, when you're going through test, trials, and temptations, write this down. Look for someone else to pray for. Amen. When God sends a test your way, mm -hmm. it's his way of saying, look beyond yourself. Because if you ever look beyond yourself, right. you find out what your problem going through is not quite as bad as you think it is. Amen. Oh, it's bad. Don't get me wrong. It is bad as you think it is. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise and bless his name. This is the pattern of prayer of any kind. Whether you're interceding for people or yourself. God does not want you talking to him unless you first tell him who he is. Thank him for what he's already done for you in the past. Thank him for what he's doing for you now. And when you get to think about what he's done, all of a sudden you realize, oh my God. He really is God. I really haven't seen him for Satan. And then once you get to thank him so much, all of a sudden... This energy comes all over you, which is the next part. You enter his courts with praise. Amen. And then when you enter his courts with praise, the praise causes you to, it breaks whatever kind of strongholds on your mind. Because uh -huh. sometimes, I'll give you a perfect example. Right. I was freaking, tweaking, stressing out everything some time ago. How am I going to pay this particular bill? I don't know what I'm going to do. And then Donna, Chris, pray. I just write, sit, drop, roll. So I sit, drop, roll. It starts. <laughs> <laughs> and I start praying, Lord, I just thank you. I'm tired. This is how my prayer goes. Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired. God, I'm tired. You, you see. You better help me out. Jesus, help me. I call on the whole Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We all, y'all, all three in one. Amen. 
I said, I need your help. I thank you that you helped me out in 1997. Oh, I thank you. And I was like, oh, thank you. I started thinking about what he did. And then all of a sudden, as I'm praising and worshiping him, my mind gets cleared. And the obvious thing I should have saw before becomes clear because praise breaks whatever stronghold or anxiety you have on your mind. That's right. God don't need you to tell how good he is because he has some type of low self-esteem. He God. He's doing that for your benefit. That's right. Amen. And then when you enter his courts of praise, then you're able to bless his name. What does bless mean? Bless means you're able to magnify or make big his name in your life. His name's so powerful that when the book of Exodus said, Moses said, who should I say that sent me? He said, you tell him you come in the name of the Lord. Amen. Use the name, and the name was the power that caused his stick to become a snake. It was the name that caused the water to become uh -huh. blood. It was the name that caused the red seed to yeah. part. It was the name that caused his face to shine. It was the name that caused even when his own people try to kill him. It was the name that caused it to deflect and caused him to be living over and over again. It was his name that caused him to be 120 years old as a senior citizen and had no problems in his eyesight. The name. Amen. You're able to bless his name. We're able to enter into his courts with praise. So let's look at how this works. Turn Before we go on, there's another important thing. The season of testing you're in right now, if you ever go in a battle to where you've never been before and you're scared, the immediate thing you're supposed to do, write this down, is get a prayer partner. Everybody say, get, get a prayer partner. Prayer partner. You don't need no whippersnapper that has any type of doubt. Amen. You look for somebody who's crazy enough to believe that God can do anything. Amen. 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 Sometimes the best people you have prayed for is baby Christians. Uh -huh. They believe God can do anything. Amen. Sometimes you don't want to get no old armchair saint who's been rocking. I'm doing the rockathon. God didn't know rockathon. He needs you to know that you need to stand on the rock. Yes, Amen. Amen. The book of Matthew, the 18th, 19th chapter says, Where two or three are gathered in my name, uh -huh. there I am in their midst. And before that, it says, Matthew 18, 18, Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. What's that saying? He's telling you prayer. We use his authority. That is authority. But prayer is authority. Amen. Do y'all know that? The authority believer is prayer. Amen. You can't you can't stop the powers of the enemy without prayer. Amen. 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 Prayer is so powerful it gets it into the intercourse uh -huh. of heaven. Uh -huh. Book of Revelation is talking about it comes in the form of perfume to him. Amen. He 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 brews over your prayer. Prayer is so powerful he's answering some prodigy's prayer who prayed a hundred years ago. Sometimes I think the reason all of us are saved in here it's not has nothing to do with us. Somebody before us right. prayed for us. Right. And prayer is so powerful, it goes beyond time. Because you don't need just a prayer partner today. Sometimes some of us don't even have a prayer partner. How many know the best prayer partner you ever have is Jesus? Amen. If nobody else is going to pray for you, Jesus is going to pray for you. Right. Give God a praise. Amen. Praise, praise. Yes, he will. Because listen, I'll prove it to you it's him praying. The Bible says, whatsoever you stop, that's what bind means. Whatsoever you, it didn't say everybody. Whatsoever you stop on earth, it can be you in singular or be you in plural. So if you can't find nobody on earth, Jesus said, whatever you stop, All right. you person, whatever you stop. People always ask me, why does this happen on earth? Because God said, y'all ain't stopping. Because the Bible says, whatsoever you stop on earth. Uh -huh. Look at the next part says, I will stop in heaven. All right. Who's stopping in heaven? Who has the power to stop things in heaven? Everybody say it. Jesus. Don't be scared. Jesus. Say it out loud. Jesus. Say it out loud. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. <laughs> Jesus is bad. Amen. Let me tell you how bad he is. If you saw the book of Luke, remember how the centurion came to him. And he talked about how his, his uh, servant is sick. And he, he can't get any better. He's about to die. And Jesus, he's walking. He has a ministry. He's walking around. Y'all didn't realize you don't have to be saved to be an intercessor, you know. The centurion was interceding. Uh -huh. All intercession means you come in place of. Mm -hmm. Right there, there. And what happened was, is he started going to Jesus, and you know, he said, I need you to come, and, 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 and I want you to heal my servant. And the religious people said, Oh, you got to help him out, Jesus, because you know, he gives all kinds of charities, you know. And, and Jesus, said, okay, that didn't impress Jesus, but he said, I'll, I'll do that to please y'all, keep y'all quiet. And did not get Jesus' attention. What got his attention? Write this down. The centurion stopped something on earth. Well, he stopped something. What did he stop? The centurion said, you don't have to come to my house. All you got to do is speak the word on right. And it shall be done. Praise I feel my preacher. It shall be done. Glory Praise to God. God. And what happened was, Jesus stopped. Remember, the Bible says, whatsoever you stop on earth, mm -hmm. 
it shall be stopped. Sometimes you're not only stopping the devil, mm -hmm. you have permission from heaven to stop Jesus. I'll prove it to you. Jesus had no intention coming to the satirian, but because he had faith. Amen. And he was blessing his name by talking about who he is. Because he said, I know you're a man of, of authority. Uh -huh. And I heard what you can do. He's telling him I, his prayer of thanksgiving. All right. You see all the upper. He entered to his court. So he's doing all this sitting in his armchair. He said, you just speak to him. And Jesus stopped. He said, you just tell him his service healed. Praise yes, he is. Praise he's healed right now. Praise right here. Him. Right now. Give God a praise. Amen. Praise That's the illustration of Psalm 104 verse. You don't have to be saved to do that. It's better if you are. Let me tell you why. Only children could get into the end of courts. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus operates the kingdom like we operate insurance plans. Did you know there's certain type of plans? Even He actually operates like a gym membership plan. See, one of the gyms that one of my friends goes to, they let the guests come in for free, but it's only for seven days. That's what sinners are like. Oh, you can come before the throne for seven days. Sometimes seven years. But there will come a time where the person at the membership will say, we can't let you in. How come? You're not a member. Why well, can't I be a member? Unlike the gym, you don't have to pay a gig. All right, you say, I know a name. That's above everything. I know of a name that every time I speak it, hell trembles. When I speak the name, the devils tremble. When I speak the name, cancer has to go. When I speak the name, diabetes has to go. When I speak the name, the folks at the workplace act crazy. They got to straighten up because there's a name. And the person in the membership desk, oh, what's that name? It was the password. You say, Jesus. You got to say it right here. say, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. And they say, come on in. Praise the Lord. You have a membership. So let's look at somebody who had a membership plan. Look at the difference between how Jesus helped the centurion versus somebody who's a child. Turn in the book of 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. You can see they illustrated how this particular person stopped something on earth and somebody else stopped something in heaven. How many know it's good that not only can you stop something on earth, you can release something? Because when he says whatsoever you loose on earth, it means whatsoever you release on earth, it will be released in heaven. Amen. Amen. So we turn to the book of 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. Y'all didn't go there that often. I use the cable contents. My goodness. I used to use the computer. I said, where is this at? What, what, what page is 2 Chronicles on? 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter. Let me know when y'all are there. I ain't there yet. Pray for them. But somebody, somebody just prayed real hard. I just found it. <laughs> Second Chronicles 20 chapter. All right. Let me give you an, an idea of what's going on here to give you evidence of what's going on here. What happened is King Jehoshaphat was told that a whole army of enemies were coming against him. Let me kind of go to the, uh, chapter 20, the first verse. We just go right there. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, and with them, uh, them the other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Look at this. The devil came against them, not only against one nation, several different nations came against one little bitty nation. How many know when the devil comes to tempt you, try you, he comes with full guns and blazes? <coughs> that lets you know how big your miracle is going to be. Amen. If he's talking a little of you, it ain't about you. It's all about the name. Amen. 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 And look what happens. Says, there, then there came some that told your husband, saying, there comes a great multitude against you from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazratamar, which is in and can die. Jehoshaphat feared. See, it's okay if you get scared. See, it doesn't mean you're in faith if you get scared. You should be, you should be feeling scared. Amen. The whole, all he comes is coming against you and just little you. And he set himself to seek the Lord. Look what his, his next response. He feared and immediately he set himself to seek the Lord. How do you seek the Lord? He's going to show you. He proclaimed the fact. See, anytime you, you have a battle come against you and it's so great and you're like, I don't know what to do, get yourself a fast. Amen. That can, it can manifest itself in many ways. You, if you like me, one of my best fasts is no sugars. That's a fast for Chris. I love my chocolate. Anybody knows me, I love my cho chocolate. You chocolate it. And I, I eat the whole thing. I get a whole pie myself. I actually got a peach pie yesterday with his present. Girl, it's going to be gone by tomorrow. By the close of business. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And for me, that's a fast. Some people, the fast could be not video gaming that day. Another person's fast is not watching enough television this particular time. Another person's fast could be you can't go on the internet for a certain time. Whatever, whatever you like doing the most, that should be your fast. Amen? Amen. The next part says, 
Then the king's son of told Jehoshaphat, let me go on. Jehoshaphat feared and, and himself and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed the fast throughout all Judah. Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Look at this. They didn't ask their delegates and have a super committee to. No, he, they went to the Lord. We, we know how to do this. That's how you pray. God, I don't know what to do. And even out of all the cities of Judah, see, he had two or three gathered in Jesus' name yesterday. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord before the new court. And look what he said. I love how he prays. Oh, Lord God of our fathers, are you God in heaven? He's reminding God who he is. He's entered the courts with thanksgiving. Look what he's saying. And rules not you over all the kings of the heathen? And in your hand is there not power and might so that there's none able to withstand you? Are you not our God who did drive out the inhabitants of those who were here before us and gave to the seed of Abraham your friend forever? He's reminding God what he already did. How many know when you talk to God and remind him who he is? See, we out quote that scripture. We misquote that scripture that says the power of life and death in your tongue. It's true. But what are you saying? The power isn't so much your tongue. The power is whose words are you putting in your tongue? Amen. Are you saying what God said? Or are you saying what the devil said? Because there's no power in and of itself in just your tongue. Amen? So he's implying the word of God in his mouth. And look what else he says. I'm going to skip a little bit. Ninth verse. And if when evil comes up upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine would stand before this house in your presence, for your name is in this house, and cry unto you in our affliction, then you will help, hear and help. Listen to his faith. He's, he's committed. He's quoting back the book of Deuteronomy. Because Moses said, if you follow the Lord and seek his face, he will remember you in times of trouble. All you do is call upon that name and he will answer you. And he's quoting for Deuteronomy there. And 10th verse, it says, Now behold the children of Anna and Moab and Mount Seir, which would not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of your possession, which you have given to us to inherit. When he's saying this, he reminded God how they sowed seeds to these kings. They didn't let them to kill them and destroy them. They let them stay where they were. They sowed seed. He reminded Lord, we did our part. We gave to these people. We, 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 we treated them right. Look how they're treating us. Remember what they did to us. Notice he didn't say any of that until he first reminded God what he already did. Isn't that something? Look what happens next. Then he goes on, and I'm going to skip on to the 13th verse. And all Judah stood before the Lord with the little ones, their wives, and their children. And we're going to skip a little bit further. 17 verse. You oh, wait a minute. Let me go on. And then as he goes on, 14 verse, it says, Then upon Je Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mentaniah, a Levite, the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Notice. When you start reminding God who he is, Jehoshaphat just showed you the pattern. He entered his gates with thanksgiving. He reminded God what he already did. He entered his course of praise saying, I know what you can do this. And he started blessing his name by saying, do this for your name's sake. And as he prayed, it didn't take seven to ten business days. How many know when you, you sometimes you need to write down blessing? And the other part I love about this is he didn't just pray for himself. This is an intercessory prayer. This is an awesome prayer to pray when you're at work. Don't pray to God, Lord, save me from this job. You should pray, Lord, give me favor and my co-workers favor in this job. Because what happens is if he blesses the whole employee, you get blessed. Isn't that something? Amen. Most Christians don't pray like that. Most of them say, Lord, help me. No. The Jehoshaphat said, help us. Amen. That includes the saints and the unsanctified. Mm -hmm. God has placed you in your jobs to be light. So that when they do get blessed, when the Lord presents himself, you remind them how they got blessed. You didn't get that raise because you're so good. You got that raise because God came here. We didn't get no raise for 10 years. We just got there. God came here. Mm -hmm. You bless the Lord. When you're in the hospital room, you see all these sick people and you believe in God for your healing. Another revelation is not only pray that God heals you, ask that he heal the whole world. Amen. Amen. Who knows? He may just do it just to show them how powerful he is. Amen. When you're in your families, and you said, Lord, I want you to save my kids, save my cousins. Go, go, go beyond that. I want you to save my whole block. Save all. And when, he do, when you do that, it causes the power of God to come in a way you've never seen before. And look what happens next. Then the Spirit of God came upon a, just a young man here. He's not a great prophet. We never heard of him until just now. And look what happened next. And then 15 verse, he said, Hear you all Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat. 
Thus say the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. See, any time you mess with God's kids, Amen. and you've done all you can, because your husband said, we did all we can, so you got to do your part now. God don't come to your rescue and do stuff you can do. This, right. this, this is special for those of you in jobs where your boss is doing stuff to you. How many know you can't do anything to your boss when they're doing stuff to you? Because I've had an opportunity to talk to different people and they're in that situation. This is a job for Jesus. Amen. Everybody say this yes. is a job for Jesus. A job for, Jesus. for those of you tuning in and you're in a bad relationship, first off, get out. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Don't Amen. start waiting on the Lord. No. Your word to the Lord is get out. Amen. Get out. Everybody say get out. Get out. When you get out, right here, right now. When he, when he said, when he said a little work, okay. And he takes off, you pack up all your luggage and get out. Amen. I actually help somebody do that sometimes. They'll say, here's what you do. We've got a plan. You, you wait till she's she, she sleep. Till I'm going to take out the trash. That's your time to get out. Amen. Because this guy's being back hit by his girlfriend. I said, what? That's what I'm going to say. So, <laughs> use common sense. Do something that you can do. That's right. And then once you've done all you can, you're like, I can't do this, Lord. I can't, I can't speak against this person. It's their position. I can't speak to this person because I'm married to them. That's a job for Jesus. Amen. Amen. And look what Jesus did for him. Not, this is 16 verse, the word of the Lord said, tomorrow, not, 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 not in the future, bye-bye. It says, tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come by the cliff as this. Look at this. Did you know God knows where your enemy's coming Amen. from? Amen. Amen. How many know God is not surprised when the enemy comes to attack you? Amen. See, here's how I, I imagine this. God is the original producer. He's an awesome motion picture. How many knows God never delivers you at the time you ask him to? He's sitting in the director chair. All right. Take one. Go. Chris just messed up the take. Stop. Do it again. Take one. Go. Chris messed up again. Take two. He takes as many takes until you get the revelation. You know what? I ain't getting out. <laughs> I, I can't forget my lines. He's going to keep testing you until you get to the point where you're like, you know what? I've never seen the rise of Satan or a seat bag, but why am I losing my temper? Why, why, why am I going off? Why am I saying these, these words? They're not other tongues. So I can interpret them right now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> why am I snapping these people? He's going to keep saying, take two, take three. He's going to as many takes until you get it right. Amen. And then once you get it right, then he'll tell you, let me talk to you on the side. What, what's going on, Jesus? You see that over there? The enemy's going to come from the far right on stage right. He's coming on the stage left, but I'm going to tell you your cues. He don't realize it, but I've already planned this out. And you got the part. Shh, don't tell the devil. You got the part. Thank you, Jesus. Hercules. That's how God operates. He's for the dramatic. He waits until when all hope is gone. Then he steps into the stage. Because how many know nobody can tell the part like God can? Amen. Give God a praise. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. God waits until there's absolutely no hope. It seems like it's seemingly gone. Mm -hmm. Then he comes out of the director chair. He comes off his throne. And he comes on the stage. And when he comes on stage, nobody says, you, you're not supposed to be on the set. You don't have no part. Maybe those devil don't do that to you. Amen. You read your Bible. Name one time in the Bible the devil says, this is not your time to come over here and tell. Mm -mm. When God steps on the stage, everybody quiet. Amen. So the Lord said to this prophet, tomorrow you go down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff by of this. And you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerusalem. You shall not need to fight in this battle. See, there's some battles you don't have to fight. Amen. Now, there are some that you will have to fight. Amen. That's where the Holy Ghost comes in. He'll give you wisdom to know when to fight and when not to fight. There are certain times I was ready to tell somebody off because there's a time to do it. Because I, I can tell you off with a smile. And then kiss the whoopee in Jesus' name. Right. No, I'm kidding. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I think it. <laughs> But there's other times he doesn't want you to do anything because if you do something, you mess it up. That's right. How many know it's not wisdom when you work? I remember 10 years ago I was working somewhere. It ain't wisdom to go to the CEO of the company and tell how to do things wrong. Amen. And expect to be employed tomorrow. It's That's not right. wisdom. Sometimes God will tell me, you know what? Just uh, get yourself some spaghetti and biscuits and Kool-Aid. Because once you get stuff, Chris, you know you can't tell nobody off with full stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sit your little happy self down. Let me fight this battle. Because there are certain times when your temper goes, he will, he will impress you. He won't talk to you. He'll just impress you to go another way. Cool off. Take an anger management walk. 
take several anger management walks. I told one person I'm so mad. I'm so mad I'm gonna take a long walk or a short period. They said, you can't do that precisely. You know, <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. Some battles you need to fight, and there's other battles you're not supposed to fight. Amen. That's where wisdom comes in, amen? Amen. But he said this time, you don't need to fight this battle. He said, set yourselves and stand you still and see the salvation of the Lord. Salvation don't just come to save your soul. How many of you know we need salvation continually? Amen. How many of you know you, I'm going to put myself out there. I need to be saved and sanctified every day. Everybody say every day. Every day. Paul said you need to crucify yourself when? Daily. 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 Not, not quarterly. Some Christians are crucified quarterly. They're like, I thought, I thought, Sandy, I thought you were dead. I came back. No, you got crucified daily. Amen. 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 Then it says, Old oh, Jews in Jerusalem, fear not. Notice he says, fear not several times. That's God's word to us. Why are y'all scared? Mind you, I'm like, y'all shake too. Got my little sword. In Jesus' name. It's okay to shake. Stand still. Amen. Amen. God's like, baby, just stand. You don't have to say nothing. You don't have to remember your lines. So all your lines is fear not. Yeah, if that's all you can do, that's all you need to whip the devil. Just, just say, fear not, Jesus' name. Fear not, Jesus' name. Sounds ridiculous to you, but in the spirit world, it's whooping somebody behind. Amen. 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 Be not dismayed tomorrow. Go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of the Lord, or Jerusalem, and they fell down before the Lord, and they what? Worship. Worship. The Lord. Now, in the natural, even though this little man said this, how do we know God spoke to him? That took faith to believe God really spoke to this man. Jehoshaphat had wisdom. He can sense. See, when you walk with the Lord and you have a relationship with the Lord, you can tell who's prophet lying and who prophesying. Amen. See, my fiance were talking about that. There's been a lot of people come through the years telling us prophet lying to us. One, of, one person told me, you know, God's called to do X, Y. He did not. As the pastor said, he knows my zip code. He knows my area code. God knows me. He knows he can't surprise me with things like that. He got to give me like a 7 to 12 month notice. That's how God works with me. He tells me stuff up front. Because he knows I can't handle surprises. <laughs> Not those kind of surprises. Amen? So when you walk with the Lord, you can tell when someone's telling you a lie and someone's not. Or you just read your word. Amen? Yeah. And look, they worshiped. And then the 20 verse, after you pray, this is how you do it. After you pray your intercessory prayer for your family, you pray your intercessory prayer for our nation, pray intercessory prayer for our brothers and sisters all over the world, pray for intercessory prayer for that very person at work who's getting your last nerve. So another prayer I pray at work is, I ask God to give me favor, not only with all my coworkers, I actually ask God, give my coworkers favor with all their clients, with all their employees, because what happens is, it creates an atmosphere of peace. Isn't that something? Amen. If you would ever get to place in your life where you're able to pray for your enemies to have peace, you're beginning to grow. I told Sharia, girl, yeah. in the spirit, I just turned 13. <laughs> You're forever growing. Amen. There's no such a thing as grown kids in the kingdom of God, Amen. you know. Amen. But everybody should be getting out of the, bi the diaper stage. Amen. After a while, the whole world's going to tell you, I'm tired of changing your diaper. That's right. you, need to, you need to get on the royal throne and use that yourself. There's too many Christians that keep coming to the pastor, and there's a time for it. They go straight to the pastor and say, pray for me. That's nice. But prayer of agreement means you already started. He's just agreeing with what you already did. Amen. 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 God wants the church in this country in particular to quit sitting on armchair, rocking away, asking for Pastor Joe O.C. just to pray for him, asking for Joyce Myers to pray for him, Benny and all of them, the Pope. No, that's nice. But God's expecting y'all, you pray first. Amen. Then call them up to agree with what you already been doing. And if you can't get none of them, Jesus is agreeing with you. They're all good people. Everybody say, say they all? They all. Good people. Good people. Everybody say, God bless, God bless the, Pope. the Pope. God bless Pastor Joe. God bless Pastor God Joyce. Bless God bless Joyce. But the only intercessor you should be going to is Jesus. Amen. God bless our pastor. Amen. Everybody say, God bless our pastor. God bless our pastor. We should be going to Jesus. Amen. Those people, old people knew what they were saying. They said, Jesus is on the main line. Amen. Look, Chris ain't on no main line. My office closes at certain times. <laughs> I'm just being real. Y'all can email, and eventually I'll get to you. But how many know when you need Jesus, heaven don't have business hours? Amen. How many know when you, when you pray, Jesus, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I come before you. I need your help. And all of a sudden it goes, boop, press front if you need the Holy Ghost. Press two if you want to talk to Jesus. I don't have time to all these prompts. Get me to the throne. Amen. And how you get past all that? 
the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Everybody said the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Amen. And so what happened next? They went by faith, 20 verse. They rose up early in the morning. See, after you pray, you ask God to help you, you go back to work and you act like it's done. Because the devil's going to attack you. He's going right. to make it seem like your prayer was not answered. Right. You go to work expecting the miracle. Right. Even if it takes three months, Amen. six months, 12 months, expecting Amen. the miracle. Amen. When you're praying for loved ones to get saved, expect, treat them That's like right. they're already saved. That's right. Don't always remind them what they're doing wrong. That's a revelation for some Amen. people. Amen. Treat them like, because you know, when you speak words of faith that come from the Bible, his word has to return to void, uh, return back to him eventually. Amen. Done. Not void, but where he can endorse it. Because when the Bible says his word would never return to him void, it means he always endorses the check. Amen. The only one who could bounce the check is the person or you. That's right. So that's how you ever hear people say, my prayer wasn't answered. The question is asked, it didn't bounce in heaven. Amen. So did you cash the check? What do you mean? You didn't cash the check. How do you cash the check? You walk by faith mm -hmm. and not by sight. Amen. And when you ask God for peace in your job, quit complaining about what's going on at work. It's time to endorse your check and say, it's a good day. Yes, it is. Even if I have to smile and it tears me up, it's going to be a good day. Yes, it will in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When you're expecting different family members to change, quit complaining about it. Lord, I thank you. You see how crazy that is? I thank you. Thank you. You know, that's how you don't bounce the check. See, let me give you one last parting thing. When the angel came, the angel Gabriel came to talk to uh, Elizabeth in the Bible. And it talked to Zacharias in the Bible. And he told them how they're going to give birth to a child in their old age. What did God do when Zacharias said, that can't happen? God's like, we just signed this check. And we're trying to tell you, it is going to, the money's there. And all you got to do is sign the check. How you sign the check? Yes, Lord. What is Zacharias? That can't be done. He kept going, that can't be done. That can't be done. He, and also he stopped. God, that's right. You are not going to bounce this check. <laughs> Sometimes God will cause situations to happen that will stop you from talking negative. Amen. Amen. I praise God every day when he does that. It's happened quite a few times for me. At times like, I keep talking. I can't hear myself. Because you're about to bounce the check. God will sometimes protect you from yourself. Amen. There have been times I prayed for God for certain things and he wouldn't give it to me. Because he's like, I didn't, I didn't sign that check. I didn't sign that check at all. And it's going to bounce in heaven as many times as it needs to. Because God always answers prayer. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, God, God always answers always prayer. Answers if you prayer. see some prayers you pray and it never gets answered, ever, and you keep buying the devil till your rebuker is rebuked, and you keep using it and, and nothing's working, the thing you should ask yourself is, has this check bounced? And if it's bounced, you ask, was it me or was it God? If it's God, it's like he's saying no. I ain't signing that. My word's not into that. But if it's you, it's because you're saying things that go contrary against what he's telling you. Do you want to get blessed about this? Amen. Everybody give God a praise. Praise the Lord. Amen. So when God tells you, whether in the Bible or with a word saying that you're in a test, and but you're going to overcome, he just gave you the check. Amen. It won't become a reality for you unless you walk in it. So I challenge you starting tomorrow. It's okay to vent, but it's there between venting and complaining. God wants his people to get to the point where you go to work and you're grown up. Amen. When people get on your nerves, you know, it's okay like, mm -mm. it's okay to get upset, but control yourself. It's okay when you're sick in your body, you have bad days, but after you get sick and you feel the pain, you say, but I just still waiting on the Lord because he will renew my strength. It's all about your attitude. And how you conduct yourself because you will overcome this test. Amen? Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. And for those of you who are tuning in, especially those of you who are overseas and even those of you who are in America, you know, a lot of people forget about this. Being a pastor of a church anywhere is hard work. Amen. We only talked about the mission fields and it's hard work where they are. But it's very hard when you're in a small church, you're starting, whether it's in the inner city or it's in the country, Amen. start a church, period, it's hard. Amen. And what people don't realize is, it's hard for members to come to the church. It takes faith for members to come to a church Amen. when they don't see the vision quite yet. Amen. And we want to intercede right now for churches all over the world, big and small. We also want to hold all the popular pastors that are getting flack 
like Pastor Osteen and Joyce Myers, the Pope, all of you. We want to hold all our brothers and sisters all over the world, our Roman Catholics. Everybody say, God bless Catholics. God bless I love the Catholic Church because they're going to help us out, Jim. Amen. So we want to pray for all of you all over the world. Amen. And we say, oh, Father, oh, Father in, the in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we thank you. for what you've, what you've already done. We set ourselves in agreement. That your, body that your body will be one, will be one and, is one, and is one in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. And for those of you who need to know Jesus, your personal sin, so, oh God, oh God I'm, a I'm a sinner. I believe you died, believe you died for my sins for my and came back to life for me. Life Come live in me, live in Jesus' name. In Jesus. And Father, I ask that you would confirm your word this morning with signs following. I thank you that your people have unprecedented favor, not only in their jobs, but in their families, Father. You love the family more than anything else in our life. And I thank you that you have sanctified the children of those who are in this room. Sanctify the children of those who are viewing this right now. I thank you, even as I am praying right now, you are visiting the bars, even as we're praying. You are visiting the clubs, Father. You're visiting the homeless shelters. You're visiting the bridges. You're visiting the, vin the villages, Father. You're even visiting those who are dying of an incurable disease, even as we're praying, Father. And I thank you that you are touching souls all over the country, all over the world. We pray for them because we know who, how big our God is. We thank you you are making a way of escape. We thank you that you are turning this economy around worldwide. We thank you that you're judging the oil companies that the gas prices will come down within the next six months in the name of Jesus Christ. I think it will enter into a season that you will make what's wrong right again. In the name of Jesus Christ, I praise you, Father, and thank you so much. You are still God. You are just waiting for somebody on earth to agree with what you already have said thousands of years ago. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we glorify, we magnify your name because you are still God. You are still ruling in the heavens. You are still ruling in the earth. We thank you even as we are praying right now that you are interceding for your children in Israel. In the name of Jesus Christ, I praise you that you are walking in the midst of Syria. In the name of Jesus Christ, even in Iran. And I thank you are rectifying the situation for your servant David's sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, remember your covenant, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we glorify your name, Father. We magnify your name. We pray for your children of Israel. You promised, Father, you make him a great nation and that you would visit Israel. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father, that it's done. In the name of Jesus. 